Please note that this educational video was developed for use in long-term care, and therefore the term resident is used throughout to describe the recipient of care. However, this information is also valuable to those providing care in other settings, such as home care and acute care. In these instances, please take the term resident to mean client, patient, loved one, or whatever term best describes the person you are caring for. Resident Daily Oral Health Assessment Providing daily oral care to residents also presents an important opportunity to check the mouth for any abnormalities. The Resident Oral Health Assessment provides a quick and easy way to record any abnormalities or concerns noted in the mouth. It is important to do assessments on a daily basis in order to become familiar with a resident's mouth. This helps to identify problems as they arise. Follow the guiding principle of look, feel, tell to assist you in completing the oral health assessment. This 60-second daily oral health assessment is an important part of overall health. Look for anything abnormal, painful, or new. Red or white patches, swelling, lumps, ulcers, loose or broken teeth. Bleeding or pus would not be considered normal and may need attention. Where to look. Lips, tongue, floor of the mouth, cheeks, hard and soft palate, gums and teeth. Take a general look inside the mouth to see if it is free of debris and note any obvious unhealthy areas. Remove dentures before doing your assessment. It is best to always follow the same routine. This helps to ensure that you don't miss anything. Once the dentures are removed, start from the outside and work your way into the mouth. First, look at the lips and inside the cheeks. Then move to the tongue, the floor of the mouth and the palate. Finish by checking the teeth and gums. At this point, take note of where plaque and debris may have built up as well. This will help you when you are cleaning the teeth. Lips. Visually look at both the top and bottom lip from one corner of the mouth to the other. Most people find it more comfortable for the lips to be moist before you have them open their mouth. Lips that are too dry may crack and bleed as the resident opens. You can suggest that the resident lick their lips if they are able, as saliva provides a nice natural moisturizer. If their mouth is too dry, moisten their lips with a damp gauze gloved finger, or a non-petroleum-based lip moisturizer. This will give you a chance to feel along the surface of the lips and will prepare the lips for the remaining assessment and oral hygiene care. Take note of any cold sores, ulcers, patches, or lumps. Be sure to check the corners of the lips when the resident opens. Cheeks. Once you are sure the lips are nice and moist, gently pull the cheeks away from the teeth and look inside. Hold the corner of the lip gently with your thumb and index finger. This position allows you to move the cheek upward, downward, and outward to improve your visibility. You may find it helpful to use a toothbrush to pull the cheek back. It is important that the brush is used gently and doesn't get in the way. The cheek tissue should be smooth, shiny, and moist. Tongue. It is important to check the tongue thoroughly, making sure you see the top, the sides, and underneath. Cancer has a high prevalence on the tongue, so early detection is important. Have the residents stick out their tongue if they are able. A toothbrush may help you push the tongue to the left and right so you can see the sides. It may also help you lift the tongue to see underneath. If necessary, use a piece of gauze to help you hold the tongue while you check all areas. This will also allow you to see into the floor of the mouth. Floor of the mouth. The floor of the mouth should appear shiny and smooth. You will see natural bumps on both sides that are saliva ducts. Some areas may appear bluish due to veins running underneath the tissue. This is not considered abnormal. You may feel under the tongue with the tip of your index finger to check for any lumps or painful areas. 
It is important to be gentle when doing this as the tissue is naturally quite sensitive. Roof of the mouth. Checking the roof of the mouth is especially important if the resident wears a denture. Inspect the hard palate, the area closest to the inside of the top front teeth, and the soft palate, the area near the throat. The tissue should be pink and smooth except for small area of rough ridges, known as rugae. Rugae are situated on the hard palate behind the front teeth. To see better, have the resident tilt their head back slightly and open their mouth wide. Having the resident face a window or light can help you visualize better. You may want to use a toothbrush or a tongue depressor to hold the tongue out of the way while you check the roof of the mouth for any abnormalities. The tissue of the hard palate may appear paler than other tissue in the mouth. Common things you might see under an upper denture are red or white patches, and sometimes it may look like the resident has a rash under the denture. To check for lumps or any area of pain, use a gloved finger and gently feel the roof of the mouth. Gums and teeth. Fold the top lip up and check for anything unusual on the front teeth and gums. Repeat this for the bottom lip. In the same way that you check the cheeks, place your thumb and index finger gently on the corner of the mouth to pull the cheek away from the teeth. This allows you to visualize the outside surfaces of the teeth and gums. To check the inside surfaces, have the patient open and tilt their head in the same way that you use to check the roof of the mouth. Again, you may need a toothbrush or tongue depressor to gently move the tongue away from the sides of the teeth. Even if there are no teeth present, it is important to inspect the ridges. Check the gums for bleeding, redness, puffiness, or swelling, especially along the gum line. When looking at the teeth, note the general cleanliness and check the teeth for anything broken or abnormal. Tooth decay appears as a hole in the tooth or broken enamel where plaque easily accumulates. If the resident wears dentures or partial plates, be sure to check them for debris or broken pieces. Your gloved index finger can help you feel for any lumps, sharp spots, or painful areas along the ridges, teeth, and dentures. It is important that you never place your fingers between a resident's teeth. The teeth can be propped by placing the handle of a toothbrush or a mouth prop between the teeth. Although this assessment may seem like a lot to do every day, with practice it should only take a minute. If you observe something that is a concern, document and tell. Fill out the daily assessment form, tell the long-term care coordinator or the nurse on duty. Observe the 7 to 14 day rule and refer as necessary. While an assessment of the resident's mouth should be performed every day, the resident daily oral health assessment sheet only needs to be completed when an abnormality or concern is found. Indicate what you have found on the mouth diagram. You may use the legend provided. The legend includes symbols for the most common abnormalities you are likely to find. A red patch is represented by an R in a circle. A white patch is represented by a W in a circle. Lumps, bumps and swelling are represented by a zigzag line. Sores are represented by an S in a circle. Bleeding is represented by a B in a circle and a star represents a loose or broken tooth. Using the diagram, put the appropriate symbol in the area of concern. Don't forget to record the resident's name, the date, and your name before putting the completed form in the resident's chart. This will provide a record of when the abnormality or change was noted. The date is important so that you can track how long it takes the abnormality to heal. Often, a lump or ulcer will resolve on its own. The rule of thumb is if it is still there in 7 to 14 days or if it continues to get worse, 
Make arrangements for the resident to see a dentist or a doctor. Be sure to communicate what you have found with the RN on duty, nurse manager, or long-term care coordinator.